we have a numerical on the femur bone. The femur is the thigh bone, which is one of the strongest and the longest bone of our body. It's given that the area of that, area of cross section, is roughly around five centimeters square, which means you're gonna assume it's pretty much like a cylinder, all right? And we are asked to find the maximum compressive load that it can withstand if stress shouldn't exceed 10 to the power eight pascals, all right? So load is just a fancy term that we use for for weight in this context, all right? So we just have to calculate what's the maximum weight that we can put on this femur and make sure the stress does not exceed this number, all right? So I want you to pause the video and see if you can try this out yourself first. All right, so I have a femur bone drawn one more time over here. And so we can assume that we are, we are putting, um, let's see, we're putting, yeah, force from here and maybe a force from here. Compressive load is something like this. You're just compressing it. This will be the load, right? This will be the load. And most of the time your thigh bone is getting compressed like this. For example, when you are standing, the top part of the body is pushing down on you and the bottom, maybe the ground or the bottom bone, the bone that comes below this is pushing up on it, all right? So your bone is in equilibrium because, but it's, it's under compression. Now due to these two forces, your bone is going to get deformed, it's gonna get compressed. So maybe something like this is going to happen. Your bone will get compressed like this and therefore there'll be a restoring force acting. There'll be a restoring force acting on it. And over here, the restoring force is upwards. Over here, the restoring force will be downwards. Let me just show you one of them. And if we take a small piece of this bone now and zoom it in, a small piece right at the top, then notice there are two forces acting. There's a force from the top, that is the load. That is the load. And there's a force from the bottom, that's the restoring force. That's the restoring force. And notice, because the bone is in equilibrium, this tiny piece is in equilibrium, the force that is of the load should be exactly the same as the restoring force. Hope that makes sense, right? So all we need to do is fi figure out what's the maximum restoring force that can be generated inside this bone, given that the stress shouldn't exceed 10 to the power eight pascals. So in this question, we're not going to use Hooke's law. It's not needed because we don't care about strain. There's no strain in the question at all. So all we need to do is look at the stress. So stress sigma is given to us that it shouldn't exceed 10 to the power eight pascals. And therefore the stress, which is the restoring force, divided by the area, and area is given to us. We can just plug in area, five centimeters, centi is 10 to the power minus two meters, the whole squared. And that number shouldn't exceed 10 to the power eight Pascals, which is just Newton per meter squared. Now, meter squared and meter squared cancels. And so if you multiply by the area on both sides, what you'll end up with is the restoring force should be less than, we multiply by area on both sides, so that gives us five times 10 to the power, minus two squared is minus four times, times 10 to the power eight Newtons. Or, write that over here, or the force, the restoring force has to be smaller than five times 10 to the power, let's see, minus four plus eight is plus four. 10 to the power plus four Newtons. And since we just saw that the restoring force is the same as the load, we could go ahead and say that the force due to the load or the weight shouldn't exceed 550,000 Newtons. And that's our answer. So that's the maximum load. The maximum load we can put is 50,000 Newtons. Now, I just want you to think about the numbers over here. 50,000 Newtons is roughly 5,000 kilograms. Does that make sense? Because um, if you think in terms of weight, 50,000 weight is mg. And so M has to be 5,000 for that. So your bone can withstand 5,000 kilograms of weight. And even if, you, if we, we could say, oh, well, we'll not go to 5,000 because 5,000 is like the limit, right? So let's, let's go, let's be safe. Let's go 10 times smaller. Your, your bone can withstand at least 500 kilograms 
right? 10 times smaller, yes. And that's one single bone. That means two bones together can withstand about a thousand kilograms. I mean, I mean that's incredible. A thousand kilograms is like what? 12 adults? So what these numbers are telling you is that your bone is capable of carrying about 12 adults. That's incredible. That's amazing. And that's why femur is the strongest, one of the strongest bones of the human body. But of course, I don't encourage you to try this at home. Don't try to make a human pyramid at home because these are ideal conditions. For example, we are assuming that the load is acting along the axis, that compression is going on. If the two forces are not aligned over here, then your bone can get twisted. <laughs> and when, when, when you have twisting forces, well, it's a different kind of stress. And we'll, we'll talk about that in future videos but anyways uh, the, don't try this at home but our bone is awesome